I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News, at 8 minutes past 10. Time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. Now stop moving this way and put down the axe. Why should I, Mr. Marshall Blodgett? Let me give you two good reasons, Smith. First reason over here in my left hand is Mr. Winchester. Second reason over here in my right hand, meet Mr. Colt. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Hello, I'm Stan Martin. It's sad that many youngsters feel the only way they can make their mark on our town is with a destructive act or a smear of graffiti. One building on New York's Lower East Side stands apart from the others. Its walls are spotless inside and out. The youngsters who work and play there have earned the respect of the entire city, just as they've learned to respect themselves. I'm talking about the Boys Brotherhood Republic. The BBR has been helping underprivileged boys work their way out of the slums for almost 50 years. By giving them the responsibility of governing and policing themselves, the BBR helps create a set of values which guide its members all their lives. I know because I was a member from the time I was six, and the BBR helped change my life. It's doing the same right now for hundreds of youngsters with no other place to turn but the streets. Help the BBR turn out solid citizens. Please send whatever financial support you can to the Boys Brotherhood Republic, 888 East 6th Street, New York, 10009. Thank you. <laughs> Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. This very room reeks of dejection, despondency, undusted cobweb furnishings, black drapes covering the window. Here. Here. Let me throw them back and at least get some moonlight, if not sunlight, into this place. In the doorway. What is it? Oh, Madeline! Am I that horrifying to look upon, dear brother? Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of the CBS Radio Network stations. This is Lorne Green. Lend me a company for a while and a trip back in time. A trip back to that country the mountain men used to call the High Lonesome, the mountains of the far southwest. And a story told by a rooster-tough old preacher who saw more and understood it better than most of us ever will. Church bells on a Sunday morning. So bright and clear in the call to worship. The echo roundly against the mountains behind the valley here. And I never get tired of listening. So when the vestryman has had a little too much of Saturday night and cannot get here an hour before service to ring the bells, I pull the rope myself. An hour until the service starts... And I have learned in these times to let the mind drift back to an adventure that illuminates the mysterious ways in which God works in the world of man. Even in this grim, rough country where God is sometimes hard to find. It concerns a marshal with a strange and terrible cross to bear. And a bitter young man who hunted too long. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Cottonwood, by John Allen. Our stars, John Larch, Vic Perrin, and Corey Burton. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. 
Sears National Automotive Sale. The maintenance-free Sears 36 battery is now on sale. Great starting power. Now only $34.99 with trade-in. You save $5. And save on Sears Dynaglass belted 28 tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass belted 28 tires. Save 40%. Super values at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop! Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. The perfect match to strike this Father's Day. Your dad and Sears Classic Collection separates. All super values. Save $10 on the sport coats, $4 on the slacks or reversible vest. In solid tones that mix and match to give dad many great looks. Like a three-piece suit. Start with solid slacks, now $15.99. Add a solid sport coat, now $39.99. And reversible vest, $14.99. Each Classic Collection separate chosen to fit dad's build. Sale ends June 16th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most larger Sears retail stores. The teller of our tale is the Reverend Thomas Haller, ordained in the Lutheran Church, a widower, a former sergeant major in the 5th Ohio Cavalry, and a builder of churches and congregations. One might say that it was the Reverend Haller's service in the cavalry and what he saw men do there that brought him to the service of God. And here is a story. I sat in the church vestibule one steaming July night attempting to finish my sermon and received an unexpected visitor. Whoop! Uh, now, Reverend, put that thing down. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Marshal Blodgett. You startled me. You always sat around of an evening in your undershirt pointing a Colts Dragoon model out the church door? No, no. It's just that last Sunday night, one of my local friends tried to raid the week's collection. Hell of a note, begging your pardon, when a reverend has to sit out here of an evening with a horse pistol in his lap. I don't know if it'll all ever come to these parts. Well, we're indebted to people like you for trying to bring law to these parts, Marshal. I don't know how we could exist without your efforts. Well, I do try. And I have to try again tomorrow. It's got to me just a little. Wanted to come by and talk to you for a minute. Against the chance things won't go my way. Well, if I may be of service. Just by listening, you can. And by giving me a promise to help out later if it's needed. See, I have to go and take a man... Right out from midst his friends and family. They ain't gonna like it, not one bit. And a man can get himself killed trying to do a thing like that. Who is it? One don't normally tell, not ahead of time, but I guess it's common talk. Ed Smith has that little horse ranch up behind Buttercup Mountain, you know. I've been up in there for the drought, yes. I got him down for the murder of Sam Slater and his boy. Last spring, you remember? trouble over those horses. Mm, I remember. Slater and his son were shot in the back. Yeah. They were special friends of mine. Not that I wouldn't work just as hard on any other murders, you understand. But they were killed last spring. Now, how did you happen to... How did I get to Smith as my man? Hmm? I just asked around. You know how it is. It all adds up. And I got a warrant in my vest here. I know. I do not need to say it, Marshal. But you must mind yourself. Well, it may go bad on me trying to take Smith. Do my best, but there's lots of cousins living around him, thick as diamondback rattlers. Just about as friendly. So listen. Will you, if I don't get back by next Sunday, will you go over and take care of Marjorie? My will's in the top desk drawer. She knows where. I got another deputy over there now, and the jail will run itself, but I want my daughter looked after. Marshal, it will go well. 
But if something should happen, I will see to your daughter, yes. And now, perhaps you'll take a glass of sherry with me. <laughs> Be glad to, Reverend. A little glass of something between two old horse soldiers just to help me sleep tonight. <laughs> Marshal Blodgett departed at sunup. Rode all day over the front range, keeping Buttercup Mountain ahead of him to his left. The heat was made more bearable by the thin, bright air, with peaks 50 miles away appearing so close they were only over the next valley. It was the high lonesome, the land of blue-green pines and sharp brown cliffs and ice-fed creeks that bubbled a song you couldn't pass up. The marshal stopped every couple of hours to give his horse a swallow or two and cup his hands against his own sweating thirst. The climb was hard on the big bay horse. They were now well above 5,000 feet. And all living lungs had to labor harder as the oxygen thinned. The marshal rested himself in his mount for half an hour at mid-afternoon, carefully sweeping his back trail with his battered army spyglass. Then he rode another three hours to a dry camp, hidden high on the shoulder of Buttercup Mountain. Oh, well, now isn't it quiet up in here? The way the Lord intended it to be, I guess. Except somebody's dog's always barking off a back porch, Summers. Oh, well, Blodgett. Better take a sip out of the medicine bottle to soften that saddle for a pillow. Get some rest if you can. Try not to think about going in to take a killer in the morning. Sears National Automotive Sale. Dirt inside your shock absorbers can cause them to fail. Get Sears Heavy Duty Plus Shocks with a self-cleaning wiper ring. On sale now, only $7.99 each. You save 20%. Installation available. And save now on Sears Super Guard Steel Belted Radial Tires. Steel Belted Strength, Smooth Ride, Radial Performance. Super Values, too. Save $40 to $76 on a set of four. Sale ends June 30th at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. Honey, I can't sleep. Maybe you should try counting sheets. You mean sheep? No, Medley Sheets from Sears in so many great colors from light to dark. Rest easy knowing your bed looks fantastic because Medley Solids come in up to 24 colors like Indian Copper, Royal Blue, Lemon Yellow, and Jungle Green. But don't just count them. Mix and match them with Medley Pattern Sheets and Cases for a designer effect. Then dream in color tonight. Available at most larger Sears retail stores in the catalog. Sears wants to break the ice when it comes to buying a Kenmore refrigerator. So we're taking $50 to $100 off three models through June 30th. You save $100 on the 19 cubic foot side-by-side -side and $70 on the 17 cubic foot top freezer refrigerator. Both have automatic ice makers and Sears exclusive humid drawer. Save $50 on a Kenmore 17 cubic foot refrigerator freezer without ice maker. All are frostless. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most larger Sears retail stores. The marshal had taken up the habit of talking to himself long ago. Lonesome, weary men in lonesome, weary places did whatever they could to ease their burden. Uh, all right, Blodgett. It's a new day. Make some coffee and then saddle up. You got a warrant in your vest and a job to get done. He rode off in the early morning sun. The hooves of the big bay horse muffled on the pine needles of the forest floor. After a while, far below, he saw a blue-gray feather of wood smoke marking the cabin of the man he wanted. And he saw an axe blade flashing too far away to hear its chop. Later, moving slowly now, the tall, thin man led his big horse down through the trees and tied off his mount at the edge of a clearing. Now drawing his rifle from its long brown scabbard, Marshal Blodgett advanced to do his duty as a very careful officer of the law. 
Ho, Smith, yeah. put it down. I said put it down. Oh, Marshal. What you doing up here? Have a warrant here for your arrest on a charge of homicide in the first degree. Deaths of Samuel Slater and his son Timothy. Oh, come on. I said put down the axe, Smith. They come from there, Marshal. What was I going to do? Why, you was going to give them back their horses you stole. Which you did. Which I did, yes. At least they said they was their horses. Just a little misunderstanding. Yep. You was going to give them back their horses. And then when they turned for home, why, you was going to shoot them in the back. And you did that too, Smith. The hell you say? And you can just try to prove it. And I really think I will. Now stop moving this way and put down the axe. Why should I, Mr. Marshal Blodgett? Let me give you two good reasons, Smith. First reason over here in my left hand is Mr. Winchester. Second reason over here in my right hand, meet Mr. Colt. <laughs> Listen, one shot and there'd be five other Smiths over here shooting you into little pieces. Certain point to that. But you wouldn't care, would you? Because my two friends here would have already spoke their piece. You take my meaning? Yeah. That's fine for the axe. Okay. Now the revolver. Uh, By the butt. That's it. Just ease it out real slow. I wish we was even right now. I almost wish we was too, Smith. The Slaters was good friends of mine. You ain't gonna get the chance to shoot me in the back. Yeah. Let's go into the cabin, get your bedroll. We got a long ride ahead. Hey, looking a little peaked, Marshal. Gonna fall asleep in the saddle. You don't watch out. I'll watch out, Smith. I'll sleep for a week once I get you in. <laughs> if you get me in. You, I'll get you in. Riding upright or draped over your horse. I don't much care which anymore. Two days on the trail. With four hours of sleep. Always looking up the back trail. Feeling the others there behind them. Wondering how long it would be before those other Smiths made their move. And now those last few miles. Only about ten more down the valley and into town. But what an easy place for an attack. A few riders could be on them in the flat, gently rolling ground. Running them down to shoot him. And scoop up his prisoner before he knew what had hit him. But then... There was another way. Let's hold up, Smith. I think we're going to go home over Mule Tail Pass, that old Apache road through there. That's an extra five miles, Marshal. And a hell of a road for the horses. Nobody ever goes that way anymore. You said it, friend. It's just why we're going to go that way. My, wasn't it hot up there in Mule Tail Pass? The marshal told me later it felt as though they'd left open the furnace doors of Hades to blow down upon him. He had to slow the horses, not push them too fast in a terrible simmering heat, and take the chance that his pursuers might catch up to him and his prisoner. And that was his mistake. Get down off the horse, Smith, quick! <laughs> they found us, Marshal! I knew they would! Oh! I told you, get down off the horse. You could have broke my neck. You got off easy. Now, down behind them rocks. Uh, let me tell you what a stupid man you are, Marshal. There's eight smiths in these hills, all my cousins. They ain't about to let me rot in that stinking jail of yours. Well, I see some of your cousins. I guess I do. Rifle barrel up there. Another over there. I count four altogether. Let me go and they let you go. <laughs> sure. They'll let me go with a 44 slug in my back. Just the way you left Sam Slater and his kid. Nope. 
We're gonna wait this out. Come dark, they'll be in here on you with knives. I know my cousins. They'll come like Chiricahuas. Leave you real bad, they will. And a knife ain't an easy way to go. Uh, you're probably right, Smith. Just one thing, though. They'll have two of us to plant. I always save the last shell for a prisoner that tries to get away. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Your long association says smoke's not just your affair. That smoke screen that you pop around to loose non-smokers' air. It's bad for kids and older folks with lungs not up to par. It's damaging for you, of course, but your smoke travels far. Your long association says please keep this thought in mind. Association and you know that cigarettes are a breathing hazard. Smokers, please don't add that extra offense. Give us a break for life and breath. This is Mel Blank and Voices of My Business. In Warner Brother cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character... Daffy Duck. <laughs> or... Uh, Porky Pig. Or... Uh, Bugs Bunny Duck. We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community, and it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books on film, records, and tapes, and you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all there, folks. That library. <laughs> A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. The sun sank and the heat sank. The marshal and his prisoner sat and watched each other very carefully. Now and again, a shadow flitted down a rock, and the marshal had to admire his attackers in spite of himself. They did move like Apaches, too quick to get at them, though sooner or later he was going to have to try. You gotta hand it to them cousins of yours, Smith. They do move real good. He saw to someone else, though they didn't see him then. High on a side trail at the end of Mule Tail Pass, a white-haired boy led a big horse, his fingers wedged over the nostrils. Stopped, looked down. Swung up a long brass telescope from his chest. Stared first at the hidden men on the rocks. Then swung it down to the two men trapped far below. He lowered the telescope, shaking his head. He'd seen the bright silver badge pinned to the marshal's worn leather vest. Oh, horse. Easy. Gonna be back in business again just for a little while. Right across the saddle, like we used to do in the good old days, remember? Easy, horse. From a battered buckskin scabbard riding high on the right flank of the big horse, the stranger slid a long, heavy rifle. Check the sight. Cock the heavy hammer. Lay the rifle across the saddle. The buffalo hunter's horse spread front feet a little, remembering, waiting. Ears back, chin high against the bit. Low and to the left. Come up a click, and let's try again. Easy, horse. Nothing sensational about death. Just a lifeless rifle barrel sliding down behind a rock more than 250 yards away. 
And down below, the marshal began to think that maybe he had a chance for a glass of cold beer after all. Lordy, what was that? Why, we got somebody else joined the party, Smith. You ain't ever heard of Sharps 50 before? What kind of a gun is that? Big old buffler gun. One of two reasons you never want to mess with them buffler hunters. The other you'd know already if we was downwind of one. Stink like the very devil. Where'd he come from? I don't know. But I'm just a little bit glad he did. And Oh, my. Just look at that. All your cousins are leaving. Twenty minutes later, a crunch of stone and a stranger edged around the rock behind his buffalo rifle. The marshal grinned back at him, lowered his own weapons, and nodded. Thank you, whoever you are. Seen your badge from up on top. Looked like you wanted help. Never asked for it in my life, but never turned it down once. James Patrick Blodgett, Deputy U.S. Marshal for this territory. Heard of you, sir. My name's Cottonwood. That well, seems to me I heard of you, too. Cottonwoods grow down by the water. <laughs> Wherever else the buffalo go. You still on the hunt? Yep. But not buffalo. Personal now. Want me to ride with you? <laughs> I'd be very much obliged if you'd ride drag, Cottonwood. Seeing that cannon of yours, don't think any of my other friends will be back. <laughs> All right, Smith, back on the horse. You're going to like our jail food just fine. On the Friday, three weeks following, having received trial by a jury of his peers, the prisoner Smith paid the supreme penalty for the murders of Samuel Slater and his son, Timothy. Afterward, the marshal and his new young friend, Cottonwood, repaired to the nearest tavern for a taste of something cool and refreshing. Okay, Al. Let's have a double out of the owner's bottle. Buy you a drink, Cottonwood? Yes, sir. I believe I'll have a taste of that root beer I seen them brewing up back in the alley. That's for the ladies, boy. Uh, in this case, it's for the gentlemen, Al. One glass of root beer, if you don't mind. Root beer? My ribbons and laces. Now, Al, I would ask you to mind your manners. <laughs> oh, he can say anything he wants. Sure is good root beer. You had it before? Folks was Germans, coming west in 66. Mm. Mama used to make the best there was. She could find the roots. You folks still around? Nope. Wagon train ambushed. Big rock. Nobody got out but me. Six-year-old kid hid under a wagon. Big Rock wasn't Indian country. That had to be... Had to be white men. Been looking for him for a long time. And still looking. Thanks for the root beer. Root beer? My ribbons and lace. Now, Al, just a little friendly advice. That white-haired kid that likes your root beer shot the smiths off my back up in Mule Tail Pass. I made it 280 yards if it was an inch. Well, I guess a kid shoots like that. He gets all the root beer he wants. Well, I see I've made my point. And for a while, Cottonwood relaxed. As though he were waiting for something. Been in no hurry to have it arrive. And he found work to his liking. Good morning, Reverend. You being a carpenter today, I see. Ah, uh, good morning, Cottonwood. Oh, you have my name. Well, it is heard around the town these days. I understand you know how to use a Sharps 50. Hunted all my life with it. Ought to. Heard a couple of things about you, too, Reverend. You have? The only Reverend I ever heard of who sets down to write his sermon with a Colt's Dragoon in his lap. <laughs> you have me there, young man. I would only point out that it's done just on Sunday nights before the Sabbath collection bag can be taken to the bank on Monday. <laughs> and uh, what else have you heard? Well, that you need a church built? That I do. Uh, not many to work on it. And those I've hired more interested in seeking shade on a hot day than swinging a hammer. Like to help if I could. And most welcome, young man. But there's no pay in it. Not just now. Maybe I'll get paid other ways, building a church. I hope so. 
Let me show you our sad lot of tools, including this very dull saw. Whew. Really is dull. You have a file? Mm hmm. Right here. Mm. My loafing crew watched as he sharpened the saw. And a lonely girl took an interest in the solemn white haired boy. Hello. Uh, I'm Marjorie Blodgett, uh, the marshal's daughter. Mm. Here, uh, good meatloaf sandwiches. Mm. Man, they are good. I haven't had anything like this since a cookhouse on the Santee. You could do better than compare my cooking with some range brum cook. <laughs> no offense, ma'am. This cook was my aunt. Well, just for that, you may have another sandwich. Uh, isn't your church, is it? No, but uh, you know how it is. Any church is good. My father and I go to the Methodists, but uh, I want this church built just as much as the Lutherans do. Well, my folks were of that persuasion. I guess I could call it my church if I ever went to one. Cottonwood worked and I worked and the church took frame. The four men working with us grew to five, to six, to seven. Sometimes I marvel at how it was all happening, this sudden activity in the good cause. And then I just quit trying to figure it out and knelt down on my knees. Looked up at the stars to the rafters of what was to be a church roof and gave thanks to the maker of us all. And Cottonwood and the marshal became fast friends. I guess all that marshals have to do is sit here on the front porch of the jail and watch the people go by. Well, that's just about it. Sometimes now your average marshal will worry just a little bit about if all them other smiths are ever coming to town to finish their business. But, yes, he mostly does just sit here and watch the people. Quiet town, isn't it? Mm. Too damn quiet, Cottonwood. Makes me nervous. Like the calm before the winter blizzard or something. Only this is high summer. Well, I guess it's high. Uh, 112 right here in the shade. Oof. I want to know about you, boy. All I really know is what I see. A skinny kid and white hair and away with a big rifle. And a hammer and saw. Why is he hanging around, I ask myself. What's he waiting for? Nobody's business but mine, Marshal. You've been around long enough not to ask. Okay. I'll ask the young fella took my daughter dancing the other night. The kid that paid high dollar for her cake at the bake sale to buy the new church door. Won't I should stop seeing her? No, I don't want you should stop seeing her. Just want you to tell me who you are. Okay. Parents killed in a wagon train raid at Big Rock in 66. I know that, boy. You're just bound to have it, ain't you? Let's go inside for some of that coffee of Marjorie's. And I'll tell you some things that you don't know. Things that'll make you wish I hadn't told you after you do hear them. You want the whole story, Marshal? You'll get it. The T-shirt goes to great lengths and becomes a dress that's a super value from Sears. The T-shirt dress for $13.99 in a bright or soft palette of prints. A great get-together of interesting styles in Easy Care Double Knit Polyester, sizes 8 to 18. Only $13.99 each, thanks to a special purchase. And a Sears special purchase, though not reduced, is an exceptional value. The T-shirt dress and other super value from Sears. Quantities limited. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Watch the birdie. Oh, that's great. Uh, your baby's wearing Sears sleep and play suit, right? Mm-hmm. And that baby stroller with the shovel handles from Sears, too? Right. Uh, why Sears? Because Sears has what I need. Take Winnie the Pooh sleep and play suits. They have double fabric toes, a must for my infant dynamo, and the stroller. That shovel handle lets me move the stroller easily with just one hand. But why the questions about Sears? Well, my wife's expecting. Oh, we get the picture. 
My dad's power hungry because he's anxious to tackle new projects with power tools for Father's Day. At Sears, find super values in a Craftsman reversible drill, saber saw with manual scroller, and dual action pad sander, each at $20 savings, now just $29.99. And check Sears heavy duty router with case at $43 savings, based on regular separate prices in Sears current power hand tool catalog. So this Father's Day, let Craftsman satisfy your power hungry dad while you save money at Sears. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Lorne Green again. And here is the concluding act of Cottonwood. They sat in silence in the jail office for a long time, the marshal and Cottonwood. As the old lawman watched the boy suck up his coffee in the slow swallows that did tribute to its heat from the stove and its day-long brewing. And finally, Cottonwood began to talk. Almost as though he were talking to himself. I was six years old then. The day they caught our wagon train at Big Rock. I remember the screaming and the shouting and the shooting. And watching my daddy stick one of them with a bayonet. He was out of old Solomon Meredith's Iron Brigade. And feared neither God nor man. I saw him shot and messed up pretty bad. Then everything quiet. Wagons burning. They rode away. Lord have mercy. And you just six years old. And just one more thing. Last guy to get on a horse, I seen him from under the wagon. Had a wooden leg. Big man, black beard. Seemed like he was crying. I don't know why, but he had a wooden leg. In all these years, you've been looking for the man with a wooden leg? Right. Found six or seven, country like this with all the sawmills. Wooden legs, not all that scarce. Thought I had him once up in the sawtooths. Knocked him off his horse and put the sharps down his throat while he cried. And then I seen it was the wrong leg. Killer had it on his left, you see. You really want him bad. What do you think? <clears throat> well, I think we ought to have some of that root beer. I got a taste in my mouth right now that no root beer will ever wash out. No, thanks, Marshal. See ya. See ya, kid. Fall came to the town. The heat left and the winds off the mountains began to slice under blanket coats and chill the sunburned necks. My church was finally finished. Pardon. His church. And one night, a strong-willed marshal's daughter asked Cottonwood a question. Why haven't you asked me to marry you? I have this thing I have to do, Marjorie. <sighs> Daddy told me. It's not human, Cottonwood. It's like an animal to hunt somebody so long to kill them. It'd be a good life here for you and me. For us. At least I'd try to make it good for you. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk to your Daddy. Will you come over tonight? First time I ever had a lady ask me to marry her. Maybe I'll just come over tonight to see what she does next. And so he rode back to his camp on the creek, down into the cottonwoods where he'd pitched his top for a lean-to. Tied the evening oat bag on the big horse, trained to stand still to the boom of a buffalo rifle. And he went and knelt down on the cottonwood roots and used the yellow cake of grainy, homemade soap the trader's wife had sold him. The water around the cottonwood roots was green and rich and cold, mountain cold. His mind swam back to a little boy fishing down in the cottonwoods a thousand miles away, a little boy fishing with his gentle father, the man tying on the worms and trying to teach the little boy good English grammar with his own English still saber cut with the accents of the Rhine River Valley. <laughs> the tears surprised him. The grief for two people gone so long ago. To remember so little of those parents. Nothing but a huge square man who took him fishing and tried to teach him how to talk. And the mother about whom he remembered almost nothing at all. So he used his bandana and decided that, well, 
Maybe it was time to lay down the buffalo gun and end the hunt and go on with life. She was a beautiful girl with spirit and guts. And the way he felt when he looked at her, all sun-dazzled and breathless. Well, maybe that was what they meant by love. She would make a fine wife. Yes, she would. I <laughs> wonder if she'll let me hang that Sharps 50 over the mantel. <laughs> Probably won't even let me keep it in the house. He got out a clean shirt that he wouldn't mind the woman washing from now on. And slapped the red dust off his jeans. Took the evening oat bag off of the big horse and brushed him down. Then, as always, slid the buffalo rifle into the offside scabbard. A gesture made automatic now these ten long years of hunting. He rode back into town and turned the corner to stop at the marshal's office hitch rail. And suddenly he froze like a pail of wash water thrown out the door at 35 below. The man with the wooden leg, the left leg, gleaming in the moonlight on the front porch. And he knew it was the man. You can step down off the horse, Cottonwood. Figured you'd better see it now than later. That's why I pulled up my pant leg. If you're going to shoot somebody... Better do it before he's your father-in-law. I don't believe it. You didn't limp like a guy with a wooden leg. You try walking on one 40 years, you won't limp either. You got a gun on me? Nope. Ain't gonna make any difference, you know. Whether you got a gun on me or not won't make no difference at all. I heard you the first time, but I don't think you heard me. No, I ain't got a gun on you. Now, why don't you step down off the horse? Been waiting a long time to find you. Oh, my, wasn't it a long time? You got your casket picked out, old man? You got your headstone carved? And then the marshal got up and walked down off the porch. He limped now on his wooden leg as he had so long before he learned how to use it. He watched as Cottonwood slid the buffalo rifle smoothly out of the buckskin scabbard, laid it across the saddle. All right, boy. Just listen for a minute. You got that cannon of yours all loaded and cocked, but you owe me a little listening first. Just don't talk too long, Marshal. Your time is up. It was me you seen there after the massacre at Big Rock. Big man with a black beard and a wooden leg. Got that wooden leg with Quantrill in Missouri. Caught a load of buckshot low one time. And you did see me crying. Eighteen-year-old kid, sick of all this killing, but too scared to cut and run for home again. At least up till then. Too scared to leave him? Till then, I said. Right after that wagon train ambush, I cut out. Went my own way. And they were so happy with all the stuff they found in the wagons, they never missed me. I hid out up in cutthroat foothills and thought about it. Damn near swallowed my colt a half dozen times, if you take my meaning. Why didn't you? Save me all the trouble. I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe because it was too easy, I guess. Somewheres, everybody's got to have a way to climb back. A ladder up out of the well, back into the light. Up in the mountains, I decided I'd try to climb back up the ladder by pinning on a badge. Figured I might last a month as a lawman before they buried me. But it was just a way of making up. <laughs> Look how long I've lasted. I heard your name before. You wasn't as good as some of them, but you was better than others. Did you, uh... Were, were you a part of it? Back there at Big Rock? No. No, I wasn't. I didn't kill your folks and nobody else. Waited behind Big Rock till it was over, wanting to run. But I come to have a last look before I lit out. I heard you crying under the wagon. When you seen me coming, you passed out. <sighs> Know how you come to be a buffalo hunter, Cottonwood? 
because I carried you four hours on the saddle, left you by Buffalo Hunter's camp, and then run like hell. Slowly, shaking just a little, Cottonwood tipped up the rifle, put down the hammer, slid the gun back into the long buckskin scabbard. He put both hands on his worn saddle seat, stared at the marshal. I'm going to go now. At least I found out. I can't make it up to you. Wouldn't know how to try. But I can tell you, my girl would like to have you for her man. For the kind of life you've really been hunting all these years. Think it over. And so the marshal went off down the wind-dusted street toward the nearest set of swinging doors. To get the kind of medicine the man needs after he's been looked in the eye by a buffalo gun. Oh, there you are. Where's Daddy? I thought I heard you two talking out here in the dark. You did? It's all talked out. Well, I don't know what's talked out, and I won't ask. But you, mister, can just come in and help me give Daddy's prisoners their night coffee. They won't go to sleep without it. it must be terrible weak coffee. <laughs> It's a heck of a thing for you to have to do. Well, I wouldn't have to. Uh, not if I was married. Maybe we'll just do something about that. And so they were married. The wedding should have been held in the bride's Methodist church. But Marjorie suggested it be held instead in the church that Cottonwood had helped to build. So I was privileged to unite them in the bonds of holy matrimony. And afterward... Well, it was the only wedding reception I've ever seen where the first toast was drunk in root beer. Dad's always been willing to give you the shirt off his back. So this Father's Day, show Dad how much you appreciate him with a luxurious-looking dress shirt from Sears. Ultressa dress shirts, now 25% off. They're handsome, short sleeve permapress shirts of Easy Care Dacron polyester. Yet Ultressa dress shirts have the look and feel of silk. Choose from solids, patterns, and textured solids, all at 25% off. Now $7.49 to $10.50. Sale ends June 16th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. A good night's sleep. That's important to you. How your mattress is constructed should be important, too. Sears Best Imperial Elite Mattress has mattress within a mattress construction. The inner spring model has individually pocketed coils covered with polyester and urethane. The polymeric foam model has individually molded comfort islands for even support. Only at Sears. Sears Best Imperial Elite. A mattress within a mattress. Is that eggnog you're drinking? Mm-hmm. In June? Sure. And after this, I'm going to Sears to wrap myself in a fall coat. What? At the preseason coat layaway at Sears, I'll save 25% on any coat I choose. Preseason or last year's leftovers? Mm-mm. All our fall 1979 styles. And a deposit holds my coat until October 1st, 1979. Save 25% during Sears preseason coat layaway sale, now at most Sears retail stores. Sale ends June 23rd. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Cottonwood was written by John Allen, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were John Larch, Vic Perrin, and Corey Burton. Featured in the cast were Joan McCall, Sam Edwards, and Jack Carroll. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. <laughs>